Does anyone else? Like the smell of their own farts. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite shows ever. We're going to be talking about Sex Education. The third season of Sex Education just came out on Netflix. I watched it in like two days and I'm rewatching the first and second season at the moment. This is one of my favorite shows ever. It is so good and I've been dying to talk about it with you guys. So whenever you guys started asking me to do it, I was like, okay. Let's do this freaking video. This will not be a movie commentary. As you know, sex education is actually very graphic and it talks about a lot of stuff that involves sex and very mature topics. So wouldn't be a very good commentary because I would basically be commenting on very, very small bits from the show. I would have to censor a lot. So please go watch the show. It's amazing. Come back and watch this after you've watched all three seasons. There's only eight episodes at each season, so it's only 24 episodes. You can watch it really fast. Watch it, come back. Um, this is not going to be commentary. This is going to be just talking through the show. I have a couple points I want to talk about in this video. I want to talk about the characters. So there's going to be a whole character section of this video where I'm going to be talking about the main characters from all three seasons. I'm going to be touching on the other seasons as well, but this is going to be mainly focused on season three because I feel like if I talk about season three, a lot of stuff that happened in season one and season two will kind of get wrapped up into it. So we're mainly going to be talking about season three and the characters in season three. Let's get started. We're going to be talking about all your freaking favorites. We're going to be talking about ships. We're going to be be talking about characters we're gonna be talking about plot lines we're gonna be talking about everything so let's get started also i have bangs do you like them do you not don't tell me if i had to rank all the seasons i would rank season three season one and then season two maybe i'm just saying season three because i just watched it but i really did like season three like i really enjoyed this season i did have a few issues but we'll talk about that we'll talk about my issues with some of the plot but i really liked this season I personally like that kind of like union of the students going against the teacher and kind of taking back their school. I very much like that. Season one. Season one, I watched it when it came out. I really did like it. I watched it pretty quickly. All I can say when I revisit season one, I fucking hate Otis. I'm so sorry, Asa. I love Asa. Aza? I think his name is Aza. Aza, he's such a he's such a brilliant actor. He's so cute. He's just so he's such a likable guy. If you see if you watch his interviews, you know he's just like a likable person. Like his persona in his interviews is very likable. But Otis is a little shit. And especially if you watch the very first season, he is just unbearable. Like he's the worst person I ever knew. Literally. And it still kind of stands today that he is the worst. Like I just cannot stand him. He's so rude to everyone. In season two, they talk about they're like, you're trying so hard to be a good guy that you're not even realizing that you what you're doing is actually being a dick to everyone. That's probably one of the good things about season two is he finally had to like look at himself and be like, what the hell is my issue? Because he was awful. Like the way he treats his mom really infuriates me. I know she kind of crosses the boundary sometimes. He's so mean to her. And in season one, that's all I can think about when watching it. Like, if it wasn't for Eric, I probably would have turned the show off. If it was, was just on Otis. Like, if I didn't, if there wasn't enough Eric scenes, I would have turned the show off. You know, it was just so annoying to have Otis be so obsessed with Maeve. Like, it was honestly so annoying. Like, it was Nice Guy Syndrome. It was um, Manic Pixie Dream Girl. It was nothing of the sort that we wanted. And also Maeve, she was like kind of annoying in season one. Like, I don't know. Like she just wasn't my favorite in season one. I definitely, she's definitely grown on me a lot more than in season one because I feel like she was like girl boss, but she was like, uh, I'll get more into the specific characters later, but her in season one to her now is very different. And I think perhaps I like it. Perhaps I like it a bit more. Season two was very forgettable to me. Um, I just did not remember like anything that happened in season two. It just didn't stick with me as much as everything else did. Like season one really stuck with me and this past season was really good. But season two, I basically forgot like majority of the stuff that happened. It's a good, it's a fine season and Compared to any other show, it's like a great season, but comparing it to these other two seasons, I do say, personally, season two is not as great as the other seasons, but 
you might disagree and that's okay that's okay season three the season everyone's talking about this season was amazing i loved the plot lines they chose um but i do have some issues with the ending of course we have issues with the ending of course we do like why wouldn't we have issues with the ending because what was going on what was going on in their minds to do a lot of the things they chose to do first of all the whole concept of the new school principal really just made me think of the pink lady from Harry Potter and the Order of Phoenix. It really just gave off that energy. Like it was very much of like putting up the new rules and you know, being almost like, not almost, very abusive to these children. Like and like very hateful towards these literal like teenagers. Like it just gave off Professor Umbridge. Professor Umbridge, I think that's what her name is. Professor Umbridge, it just gave off the same exact vibe. I don't know, maybe that's like a British thing. Maybe I'm just saying that they're the same because they're British. I like the storylines that it brought out and I like a good antagonist that I can hate. I think she was a really good antagonist just because I fucking hated her guts and that's what they wanted and I think that was perfect. Um, sex education, it's been Adam's dad, but we kind of had that Adam's dad, um, redemption like what i say a redemption i don't know because what he did with gene's book i just like cannot forgive like i just cannot forgive that because i was really messed up like i will defend gene with my entire life like why did he do that so he's not on my good side yet but i was like kind of feeling for him low-key in this season but it is i think the antagonist was better for this season maybe it's just because she was like i don't know she kind of tricked us she did kind of trick us. She was like, oh, like I'm the cool like alumni from the school. I, I went to Mordell too. And then she was like, take down the cook wall, take down the penis wall, cover up everything. And I was just like, come on, you're ruining the party. And I don't really know how the story is gonna go now that like their school is shutting down. Like, I don't know why they set it up like that. It's, it's, it's feeling like Glee when the Glee Club literally got disbanded like 11 times. Like I'm feeling a certain way about it and I don't like it. Um, I don't like it when like, I don't like it when the like the school is like disbanded. I think that's just like an icky feeling. I don't like it. It, it makes me anxious. Um, maybe that's what they want me to feel, but I just didn't really like it. I feel like it's kind of a, a silly little plot that a lot of people do. I think it would have been more fun to put a new person in charge instead. Perhaps another stranger. I really hope they don't end up going to different schools. If they end up having to go to different schools in the next season, I am going to like throw myself off a bridge. If there is a fourth season and they go to separate schools, like I can't handle that. I really cannot handle that because I need them to stay in the same school. So whatever you're dreaming of, Enjoy dreaming about it, really. I'm gonna talk about two, I, actually, I'm gonna be talking about three couples right now. Um, I'll probably get into more about ships and all that once I go to the characters, but I really wanted to talk about the relationships in season three. The relationships that I'm gonna be talking about, I'm gonna be talking about Ruby and Otis. I'm gonna be talking about Isaac and Maeve, and I'm going to be talking about Adam and Eric. Starting off with the literal best thing that's ever happened to me, Ruby and Otis. I freaking loved this pairing. Do you want to smooth them out for me? Not particularly, no. Well, I was thinking maybe you could stay over tonight, watch a movie, maybe, uh, <clears throat> you know. Wow. I wasn't really expecting to like it as much when I saw people tweeting about it and people really loving it, you know, especially after the trailer dropped and they were like seeing hints of it. Like everyone really loved them and I didn't quite understand it until I started watching. Like literally even though it's the first episode, I was like, okay, I get it. I do get it. I really do get it. Like I really just fell in love with Ruby this season. I thought she was like so funny. She was, she reminded me of Emma Roberts and that Emma Roberts mean girl character, like that mean girl, but it's just like, you can't help but love her because she is so goddamn funny. Like it's kind of giving, you know, Santana Lopez. It's giving, you know, um, Madison Montgomery. It's giving Chanel. It's, that's the mean girl. Like the mean girl that is just so mean, but also just so goddamn funny. You can't help but love her. What are you looking at? 
Your eyebrows look bad today. And she makes points too. Like she actually does make several points when she is dissing someone. I love Ruby, she's the best. This was the only time I liked Otis. I feel like I really liked him a lot more when he is with Ruby. I think his pairing with Maeve and even Ola, I don't feel like it brought the best out of him. He was so unlikable with every other person, especially Maeve, especially Maeve. I just have to point that out, especially Maeve, he is so unlikable. I'm so sorry, he's so unbearable with Maeve. I love the pairing of him and Ruby, I think it gives I think it's a wonderful pairing, a wonderful dynamic of clueless boy, clueless like nerdy kind of like awkward boy with popular mean girl. I think that is so wonderful. I think it is a match made in heaven. I think they're soulmates. I love that we got to see more into Ruby's character this season. You know, last season we got a little bit into her dad and then this season we got to even see her dad and we got to see a lot more emotion from her, which I was really, really excited for and I really, really loved it. That hurts. I love you. She ended up sharing those feelings with Otis and it ended in the worst way possible. I kind of hate this. I hate the reason that they broke up was because he doesn't say I love you back. Being as I think it would have been a wonderful opportunity in the show to really um, flesh out the conversations around I love you and the conversations that if you don't say I love you back right away, it doesn't mean you don't love them and it doesn't make that statement any less valuable if said later than one person. But you don't love me. I just have to say that in my own time. And I don't feel that way right now. I think that is a very important conversation to have, especially to younger people getting into relationships and they don't really understand love and it's such a hard thing to understand and you just kind of say it because they're saying it you don't want to feel bad and you know you don't want to hurt them but you also don't want to lie and then we get into this you know awful endless cycle of people saying that they love someone and they don't really mean it and they say it out of fear of hurting the other person i think that would have been a wonderful point in the story to fully flesh that concept out and that discussion that should be talked about personally i think it is because i've been in that situation i say i love you too fast and i didn't even mean it i just said it because they said it and it feels horrible because you're not being honest but you also didn't want to hurt their feelings Never said that to anyone, Otis. I'm sorry. So it's such a hard place to be in. I think they missed out on that point by just making her go, oh my God, I hate you, let's break up. Him just being like, okay, whatever. Them like not really getting to talk that out and really get to an understanding of it. I hated that he didn't say I love you, not because he doesn't love her or not that he doesn't think he can love her, is because he loves Maeve. I think that is so disappointing. I was so disappointed by that. That was one of the worst parts, you know, first of all, that they broke up. Second of all, that they kind of fumbled the ball on a really, really um, interesting discussion, in my opinion. I think it could have been a really good discussion for this show specifically, since they do that with most of their plots. Isaac and Maeve, I don't really have an issue with Isaac and Maeve. I don't really think it's that bad of a couple. I don't personally like Isaac that much. I feel like he was kind of like a little too obsessed with Maeve in the same way that Otis was, but we already know that I absolutely hate Otis, so we cannot talk about that. But I feel like he was almost like borderline obsessed with her. He was very into her personal life and he kind of just like crossed some boundaries and it was just like not what I really wanted from him. And we don't really know him. We don't really know him outside of the connection he has to Maeve. And I think that's so devastating because one of the things I love about sex education is that a lot of the characters, the many main characters that they have are fully fleshed out. But then we have Isaac and we have a few others where I don't really know their personality. I don't really know their character other than the small interactions that they have with other characters where they're almost an extension of their love interest, which I think is really sad. I also think it's really sad for Isaac because without Maeve, he is not in the plot anymore. Without her living at the park, he is not in the story anymore. And I think that is a really poorly written character. To introduce him and to only have his connection be to Maeve. So Maeve's going to America, Maeve's not living there anymore, he is not a part of the story anymore and I think that's really sad. Maybe he still will be in the story but not in the same way he was which I was hoping that 
we would get to see a lot more from him this season. It seems like Isaac and Maeve were, was a throwaway plot. It didn't seem very thought out and it was kind of like they had that one love scene and I did really like the inclusion of that to include them talking about how to have sex and how it works for him personally. I think that was a very important discussion to normalize and to spread information about and I don't know if it's correct information and I know this goes into a far longer discussion and personally it's not my place to talk about it because I don't know much about it so please feel free if you had an issue with that scene if you loved it if you hated it if you thought it was well um portrayed or if you thought it was a bad representation i thought it was a cute love scene nonetheless whether like it was cute i thought it was cute let's talk about uh, -ba -da -ba -dum, adam and eric adam and eric um we have gone through a journey with them it has been a long journey to get to this point adam has had the most character development in this damn show um probably because he started off at rock bottom i think you know they really put a lot they put a lot into adam in hopes that this character arc would pay off I personally think it did. I think that they got me. They got me. I'm starting to like Adam. I'm starting to like Adam because they kind of just made him very likable. He's still messed up. He's still fucked up. But, you know, they're, they're making him actually grow. And I'm really liking it. And I'm really liking... I love seeing development like that. And I love seeing people change even in shows. I think it's very important. Don't you think it's weird how... The last surrogate was never in the show. I watched the Kardashians with my mum. Well, well, well. I personally like seeing a character change and grow, and I also love seeing a character that is very lost finally finding something. I think it's so satisfying and so comforting. Anyways, him and Eric this season kind of loved them. I kind of didn't have an issue with them. I thought they were pretty cute. Um, I hated the way they broke up. I absolutely hated it. Why I say this is because it is the worst way, the reasoning for why they broke up is so upsetting. Honestly, I don't have an issue if they break up. Like, if they break up, that is fine. I'm not an Adam and Eric, like, I'm not an Adam and Eric warrior. I'm not begging for them to stay together. I don't think they're that amazing, but if they're gonna break up, make it a better reason. Because Eric's reasoning for breaking up with Adam is really odd to me and it's the worst like trope I guess if you could call it a trope when breaking up and it is the idea that you're just starting to be gay I'm I'm level five gay you're level one gay I want to do all this gay things I'm gonna I'm ready to explore and you're just starting to walk I think it is such a shitty way to break up a couple why I say that is because it is only done with gay couples they only choose to do it with gay couples and i think that is so frustrating i think that is so frustrating i've seen it in like a thousand shows not a thousand shows but i've seen it in a ton of shows where they use that logic and that that weird reasoning for breaking up and it does not make sense it's so frustrating i wish they incorporated something more to eric's reasoning him traveling him doing more things and building up that reasoning for why they broke up because i feel like they had one scene where adam was like i'm not ready to go to a club or a bar or a gay place yet i'm just not comfortable eric got a little down and then it was kind of seen as that was the reasoning that they broke up was because adam said he wasn't comfortable going to a club or even they could have just made adam break up with eric they literally could have just made adam break up with eric for cheating on him for kissing someone else it would have been that simple. They didn't need to use this rhetoric of you are baby gay. I am um, professional gay. Don't have an issue if they break up, not begging for them to stay together. Just wish it was written better because I hate that specific breakup reasoning. I hate it. It makes me itch. It makes me itch. I'm itchy. I'm itchy. This whole season was just um, a little bit of a mess in the last episode. I think the last episode, the endings were not wrapped up well i think they should have added a few more episodes to the season i wish they got renewed for like a 10 episode season or something to kind of flesh out those storylines that they were trying to tie up for the season because it kind of just seemed rushed like you're not giving me a lot 
to build up on for whatever ending I have to accept. Now, if you're gonna end me on a cliffhanger, end me on a cliffhanger. End me on a cliffhanger. Don't start an ending in the second to last episode and finish it in the, sec in the last episode and expect me to be like, that's good. We're going to be talking about characters, but before I get into all the list of characters, I'm going to be talking about how the show kind of deals with serious topics because I personally have a lot to say about that. Um, if you don't want to watch it, you don't have to, but I'm going to talk about it. After watching this show for three seasons, I kind of have a feel of how they dive into serious topics and by serious topics I'm talking abortion, I'm talking about sexual assault, I'm talking about racism, homophobia. Teen shows nowadays really love including these topics. I feel like teen shows from the beginning of time liked doing this, you know, Degrassi and you know, My Secret Life of a Teenager. These have always been done. They like bringing up serious topics um, but it's very important how you portray them because sadly a lot of teenagers information about serious topics like this come a lot from things that they watch and media that they consume. It's very, it's, we're in a weird place of media. We don't know how these shows are affecting the people that are watching it. There's no real study about it. And you know, I know people aren't just getting their information from these TV shows now, especially with the internet. You have a lot of access to more information, but I still do believe, I still believe that media teenagers are watching, young adult minds are watching, is very important how you portray serious topics and how you handle them. Like, you have to handle them with care. While watching Sex Education and seeing the serious topics portrayed that I have personally experienced, um, I can't speak for all of them, but, you know, for the ones that I saw that I personally, you know, related to and, you know, have experienced, I thought it was really well done. I thought I didn't feel like shit after watching it. That is what I want from, like, a teen show. Like, I expect when I watch American Horror Story or Black Mirror to feel like shit after I watch the episodes because they're kind of more in that horror adult genre. Sex Education is a show for teenagers or for young adults. It's supposed to be a comedy drama coming of age sort of show. I don't want to feel like shit whenever they start bringing up serious topics. You know, I go to Euphoria for that. I'm so sorry. I also really like that in Sex Education, they don't show a lot of graphic stuff. And I know you're probably thinking, Trin, like we have seen full nudity. That is not traumatizing to me. Um, I think nudity should be normalized. I don't think we should sexualize nude bodies so much, um, especially women, especially female bodies. I think we need to take a step back and realize that there is something very wrong with sexualizing every single boob you see, you know? Not all boobs are, you know, sex objects. Actually, no boobs are sex objects, I'm so sorry. You know, even shows like 13 Reasons Why or Gossip Girl, and I know everyone's like, Gossip Girl is so problematic, why are you bringing it up as an example? Well, like, 13 Reasons Why is really problematic, so I'm bringing that up as an example because of this specific reason. It's very graphic, they show a lot of disturbing imagery that I don't feel like is necessary for First, first of all, I never think it's necessary in any type of media that we see. I especially don't think it's necessary while watching a young adult TV show. Every A lot of shows do that just to seem raw, just to seem like they're showing the reality of it, to show the truth of it. And I'm just like, I don't need to see Hannah Baker death scene. So awful. One of the most awful things I've witnessed. Now, this doesn't mean that I think sex education is shying away from the topics. I still fully believe that with the events that I experienced that were shown in the show that I related to, it didn't feel watered down or vague. Sometimes I watch shows and it feels very vague and you know they're using um, allegories and they're trying to do like you know symbolism and they're trying to just be like kind of like coy about it because they don't want to say the actual words when i'm watching a show i want you to speak to i want to actually hear you say it sometimes i don't want just to be like flower allegories it's very comforting to me even though these topics are triggering and they can be very sensitive 
to me what I've seen I can't speak for every sensitive topic that is you know shown on the show feel free to leave your comments and tell me what you guys thought on this you know talking point that I'm talking about because I would love to know what you guys think about that for me personally I find comfort in this show in you know even the hard things that I have experienced and the triggering things that you know I don't like really seeing in other media that is one of the things I have to praise the show for is how they talk about sensitive topics feel free like I said let me know your thoughts in the comments down below next little topic is characters you guys are so ready for me to dive into every single character I know you are Otis little shit I don't need to say anything more um he's got some cute and quirky moments he's a little shit the way he treats his mom oh die I would have killed him off at this point if I was a writer because he's insufferable sometimes the way he treated Eric in season one when he left him at the bus station that was enough for me to kill him off the show I'm so sorry Maeve she's all right I think she's an all right character I think I had a hard time warming up to her because I feel like she fell under the I'm not like other girls trope in a lot of different scenes, especially how they introduce her. She kind of falls under Manic Pixie Dream Girl. She's they, they're kind of setting me up for that. Now that I'm in season three, I gotta say I'm starting to like her more. I liked her best with Jackson. I'm so sorry. I do like her best when she's either with Jackson or with Amy. I think that's where her character shines. But I think we kind of moved on from that. I'm not like other girls trope in season three. Even in season two, I think it was a lot better than season one. So go Maeve. Um, did not like her hair, no. Next up is Amy. Amy is one of my favorite characters. She's the one I find the most comfort in. Um, I find a comfort in a lot, a lot of the characters, but she is the one that I relate to through and through. I feel like she is that innocent, forgiving part of myself, that sensitive part of myself, and I relate to that so fully. I'm a Cancer, I'm emotional, and I, I tend to get overwhelmed really easily, and I just relate to her through and through. I think she is a wonderful character. She is funny, she's hilarious, first of all, and she has just been through a very big journey from season one, if you go back and watch season one and you see where her character is in season three, you can actually see that she's had a lot of development. You wouldn't really think that because she's not really shown to have that much development. Like, you know, say Adam or something where he's like a complete asshole in the first season and now he's like, you know, literally like a dog trainer. Amy has had a more subtle one that kind of falls back. But if you do go watch the first season, you'll be like, holy shit, she's changed so much. What she goes through on the bus and how we're still dealing with it in season three is really meaningful to me and seeing them talk about that on screen is very important to me and I'm sure it's important for a lot of different people you know maybe you watch and you think it's cheesy or something personally I find a lot of comfort in it and I was really I was really touched I'm so sorry I was really touched when I when she starts talking to Jean about what happened and how she's having trouble with physical intimacy with people she likes. I think that is so real. I have a lot of physical intimacy issues. I don't like it when people touch me and that stems from people crossing boundaries when I was younger and felt a lot of comfort in seeing that portrayed in a TV show. And I know that's kind of silly but to me, I think TV and media and movies and art in general can be so moving in many different ways and seeing things that you have been through portrayed in an art form can be really healing. Eric. Eric is such a good character. He is literally my love. Like ever since day one, since the very friggin' first episode, I have loved him. And even though he's seriously like one of the funniest characters on the show, even though they're all funny, Eric's like literally one of the top three funniest characters. I think he's so freaking funny. Even though he is re really funny, he is not reduced to being just funny. Fun to sometimes have a comedic relief, but when they're one of the main characters, I don't want them to be reduced to that. And I think this goes hand in hand with his sexuality and also his race. He's black and gay. 
he is never reduced to just being black or gay. This is important. And they show that they can write these characters and still show that big part of themselves um, that impacts their day-to-day -day life without reducing their story to just that. I love seeing the character's personality and, you know, other parts about themselves that isn't just their sexuality or their race or even the good stuff like their comedy or their tragedy you know i like seeing people <laughs> i like seeing people i like seeing well-rounded people and well-rounded characters in season three where he goes to nigeria with his family has got to be one of my favorite additions to the show i think it was i think it was one of my favorite scenes i really liked that they incorporated that and they showed a lot of him in Nigeria. Um, I would have liked to see even more. We've kind of had little hints at Eric's culture and background a little bit throughout the first two seasons, but this time I really liked going to Nigeria in the show. I think it was a really good addition and I hope we continue to incorporate Eric's culture into a storyline if there is a season four. Now that we talked about Eric, we can talk about Adam. Um, we've already kind of talked about Adam. He's had the most character development on the show. Um, each season, he has changed so drastically. He went from like the big bad bully to the clueless little dumb dumb boy. It was great. I, I really liked it. Um, I'm not a fan of homophobic guy turned gay, but I think at least for what we went through of that homophobic guy turned gay, turned gay, homophobic guy like found out gay, I think it was, it paid off. That kind of brutal start that they gave him to his drastic change now. Um, I like that I got a lot of time to actually hate Adam before they tried to make a redemption arc. I think if they tried to do the redemption arc in season two, it would have been a bit too quick. I liked it that they waited until like the very end. I personally liked his character in season three. I thought it was funny. I thought, you know, his kind of like aloofness was was very, it was a very good touch to his character and I, I really liked it. Ola, um, I don't really have that many opinions on Ola. I think she was fine. I like her dynamic as kind of Otis's sister figure and even kind of like Adam's sister figure. I think she's really good in that role. I, I, I like her in those scenes. I don't really have that much to say about Ola. I, I, I don't dislike her. I just don't have that much to say about her. Raheem, I think it was kind of sad what happened to Raheem. I think in season two, what happens to him is actually like kind of so fucked up. It's hard because they write him in as someone whose only connection to the story is to a love interest. The same thing with Isaac, his connection to the story is Eric. Now he's not in a relationship with Eric. Where does his character fall now? It's so, unfortunate when they make extensions of characters through their love interests and then they don't really know what to do with them after they've moved on from that love interest. So I was very sad that they didn't really know what to do with him this season and they only found a character within him by interacting with Adam, so. But I did love his little poop scene. I thought it was so funny. Don't you love a little poop scene? I think we need to have more poop scenes in shows. Like, I like a poop joke. I like a fart joke. Lily is my little alien girl. I have loved her since she was introduced. I think she's so funny and so just magnificent. I She is what JK Rowling thinks Luna Lovegood is. Like, I like it that Lily is weird and actually like a, like she's actually weird. Like she's actually like so in love with aliens. I love that. I love that. I think that is wonderful. I love it that she got introduced as like sex obsessed. She wants to have sex with someone. She wants to she wants to lose her virginity, but she also loves aliens and she loves penis hands. Ruby I am obsessed with her. I am just obsessed with Ruby. I think she is so wonderful. Um she's just built different. She's just built in a better different way. Sometimes I was relating to her. I was like, I want to just boss people around. I want to just stick my bag into my boyfriend's hand and just say, take it and, you know, just waltz around my day and tell him what to wear. I think that's very nice. I don't see the issue. The show tried to paint her as controlling or mean or whatever they were trying to paint her as. And I was just like, okay, and she's pretty, she's right. What do you want me to say? I can't argue with 
someone that's correct. She's amazing. I love her. There's nothing else to say. I hope she gets a freaking banger storyline if there's a season four. Jackson. Let's freaking talk about Jackson. Let's freaking talk about him because he is so amazing. And I know I've said that about every single character. I'm like, this character is amazing. This character is amazing. But no, for real, Jackson is amazing, period, point blank. Like he is what we needed. I didn't know we needed him until we got him. He is the jock, dumb jock that we all wanted. And he just, oh my God, he just fits the role so well. You know, I think a lot of people talk about like golden retriever energy. I feel like Jackson kind of gives that like golden retriever energy. He's just so freaking, he makes me feel like safe. Like, like nearly cried seeing him through the seasons because he went through such a big journey, you know, he struggles with like heavy anxiety and panic attacks and I relate to that heavily. I think he is just such a good character. I love seeing his journey. I love seeing him go from very obsessed athlete and you know doing it because his parents wanted him to to you know going into arts and go trying to be an actor and finding things that he liked outside of um swimming he just makes everything better like everyone that has a scene with him i'm like oh my god i love them but i'm like do i just love jackson like do i actually like this character or do i just like jackson now we're moving on to vivian i am a very big vivian and jackson shipper i have been since they start first started interacting in season two I very much so love them together. I think they just have a really good dynamic. Um, you know, they're kind of playing off this best friends vibe, but I know I see right through you. I see a little bit more in our future. Um, maybe I'm a psychic. Maybe, you know, maybe you're calling me crazy. Maybe you don't think this is a possibility at all. I am seeing it so clearly. My vision of Vivian and Jackson should come true in maybe a year. I'm thinking when the next season comes out, I think maybe that's what I'm getting. I loved Vivian in season two. I was so excited when her character got introduced. I love it that she's super smart and I love the dynamic they had of Vivian Jackson, dumb jock, super smart girl. You know I love that. I love a himbo and a nerdy, nerdy person, nerdy girl. Her character in season three was um, not the best. Like did not really like her for like majority of the season, maybe like 80% of the season. In the last two episodes, she was like, okay, I'm back. She was like, I'm back. Mm, you know it, I was tricking you, I'm back. She was just frustrating for some of the scenes, some of the majority of the show, she was frustrating, but then she pulled back because I knew she would, I knew she was gonna pull back, I knew she was gonna come back to us. And she did. The next character is a new character which was introduced this season. Their name is Cal. Cal um, kind of got introduced more to follow in Jackson's Lee. They were kind of like, um, got fed in that way. I don't have that much to say about Cal. I don't really have an opinion. Um, why I say that is because it's not that I don't like them, it's that I don't know them. Like through this show, through the season, I had no idea like anything about Cal other than that they were non-binary. Their whole story kind of focuses around being non-binary. Although I do think that is a very important story to tell, I think that they kind of fumbled the ball on just kind of introducing a character that was non-binary and that's it. You know, I think for a lot of other characters, they do a very good job at not reducing characters to one thing about themselves. And I'm sad to say that they did that with Cal. All I knew about Cal was that they were non-binary and that they like to smoke weed. It kind of just felt like they were there just to play like a new in love interest for Jackson, which is okay. And it just felt like they were there to develop Jackson's plot and Jackson's, I didn't like Jackson's own personal plot. I'm hoping been in season four if they do get one that they can develop their own plot that can stand alone without Jackson. I was a little bit excited when they didn't get together at the end of season three, not because I don't like them together, but because I do want to see this character on their own. I do want to see them have a story that's not attached to Jackson. Before I talk about the last character, I do want to throw in, um, you know, Olivia, Anwar, um, Jakob, I think that's it. Oh, Kyle 
and Steve. Um, I don't really have much to say about them. They're not very forefront characters. They don't really... They're definitely more side characters in the grand scheme of things. I hope we get to see a little bit more of Olivia and Anwar in the next season. They had a more prominent role in season one, which I wish they would bring that back because I feel like they've kind of fallen in the background. Kyle, I don't really care about. He's kind of like the comedic relief, fun for him. Steve, don't know a single thing about Steve. Really don't know Steve. I can't make a statement about that man. Um, Jakob, I think Jakob is fine. I think it's whatever. I don't really have an opinion on Jakob. I feel like he's... I don't really have an opinion on adult characters in teen shows. I'm so sorry. But you know who I do have an opinion on? <laughs> I definitely have an opinion on Jean. I love Jean with all my heart. Let's talk about Jean. Let's talk about Jean. We need to talk about Jean. Don't say anything about Jean to me. If there's any Jean slander in the comments, you are getting blocked. Your comment is getting deleted. I really don't care because Jean is the best person I know. I know she's made some mistakes. Like she's done some things. She, everyone makes mistakes. Don't you just think she's amazing? Like. I just think she's amazing. I feel like she's just trying to live her life and be happy and everyone is ganging up on her. Like, why is everyone ganging up on her? Her son, her partner, her ex-lover, her baby. Like, why is everyone ganging up on Jean? The freaking school is ganging up on Jean. In season two, what the fuck was that? Oh, I hated it. Literally, Jean is one of my favorite characters ever. She's so wonderful, amazing, beautiful. I can't, even, I'm shaking, shaking with anger. And if I missed any characters, um, I'm so sorry. They just didn't stick out to me. And if I missed any characters, I'm so, 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 so sorry. Or if I missed out on talking about anything, I know I didn't go too in depth on any season, but this was kind of more of an overview of things that stood out to me. And you know, in season three, I kind of went into more overviews of stuff rather than going into very, fine details. I love sex education. I really wanted to do a video on it and I really hope you guys like this video and I really want to hear all your thoughts about sex education in the comment section down below. You know, where your opinions differed from mine, you know, where you agreed. I want to know it all. I want to know your thoughts on the characters, you know, even the characters that I don't like. I know this wasn't a commentary and it's a little bit different, but I'm planning on doing more videos like this in this format because I can't do commentaries on every single every single thing ever. It's just not plausible. So I hope you guys like this format and I hope it satisfies your needs just as a commentary would. Make sure you guys subscribe and share this video with your friends if you enjoyed it. I will see you guys next time. Bye!